The 2020 Democratic field is out in full force this weekend with just a month to go until the first Democratic debates. Now, the newest of the 23 candidates, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, hopes to catch up with his progressive pitch and his ability to get under President Trump's skin. Joining me now from the campaign trail is New York Mayor Bill de Blasio. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, first, you, you entered a very crowded Democratic primary race. You've pitched yourself as one of the most progressive candidates in the field, but prominent progressives are already out there. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, they're already polling in double digits. So what do you offer that those and the other 20 candidates do not? Dana, there's lots of good candidates, but I want to be very clear. You know, I run the largest, toughest, most diverse city in America. I'm the chief executive of that city, and I've made things happen for working people. So a candidate, a lot of candidates are putting forward good ideas. But the real question I think the American people are asking is who can get them done? Who can prove that these changes can be made? And I talk about putting working people first. That is the kind of approach our government, our federal government hasn't had. Let's be very clear. Federal government has been on the side of the wealthy and the corporations for a long time. We saw that with that huge tax giveaway uh, just a few years ago. In New York, we've done the reverse. We put working people first. We put money back in the hands of working people with things like paid sick leave, a full day, high quality pre-K for all our kids guaranteed health care for folks who don't have insurance. These are things that are happening right now in the nation's largest city. And the other point you referred to, I, I know something about Donald Trump that's different from the other candidates because I've watched him for decades. I understand his game plan. I understand his tricks and his strategies. And I do get under his skin. I called him on the first day of my campaign. I called him Con Don because he is a con so artist. That's how he's gotten ahead. And he immediately responded multiple times that day we got to take that fight to him if we're going to disrupt him and ultimately so, beat him. Okay, so I want to, before you get there, I want to talk about one of the major hurdles that you have so far in your primary campaign, and that is polls show that you have the worst favorability ratings of any Democrat in the 2020 race. Three quarters of voters in your city, New York, your constituents say you shouldn't run. So how do you explain that kind of negativity to a voter who just heard about you for the first time? Well, Dana, my voters are going to get to know me as is true in every election. Look, uh, I've had two elections in New York City and won both overwhelmingly. So the people in my city decided that they wanted this leadership because it puts working people first. That's what I do. And people ultimately, after they hear all the facts and look at all the choices, they want someone who knows how to support working people. And, and I'll tell you, I found this with polls over and over again. If I had uh, believed the polls and listened to the polls and all my other elections, I might have just stayed home. But it's not where you start, it's where you end. So much of the time, the polls don't tell us the truth. When people get to know you and see what you're about, that's what they respond to. Now, I've been in Nevada uh, yesterday talking to uh, Democratic Party activists and immigrant activists and, and veterans, and I say to them, look, we can make big changes in this country, but we have to be blunt about one key fact, that there's plenty of money in this world and there's plenty of money in this country, but it's just in the wrong hands. So when folks hear that kind of blunt reality and that honesty, they respond to it. So, and so Dana, I would yeah. say the more folks get to hear this message and look at the experience I have and what I've actually done for working people, uh, the more it'll come over to this side. Okay, th that might be, but in the short term, it's not just the, the question of the, the so-called horse race where you are compared to the other candidates. It's, it, it is, it is likability. So I'm going to ask you a question that is, frankly, often asked of women when they're running. Do you have a likability problem? Well, again, Dan, I'm looking at real elections in, I would say, one of the toughest political environments in the entire country, the most diverse city in our nation. And I won overwhelmingly two times. So I would argue, you know, when you're talking about appealing to every kind of New Yorker and every kind of American, I've built those very broad coalitions. And folks had to have liked me to have made me mayor of New York City okay. twice. But more important than that is they like the ideas, they like the policies, because it's so important. We can't accept the status quo we have now so, in our country. Working people are not getting ahead, and they need to see change, but it has to be from someone who knows how to do it. Okay, so let's turn to some of the issues that Democrats are talking about on the campaign trail. Uh, one is what uh, what the president calls the I word, impeachment. Nancy Pelosi says mm -hmm. House Democrats, they're not there yet. They're not on the path to impeachment yet. 
Progressive voices on the Hill, though, are saying we should be. They're becoming louder. What do you think? Do you support beginning the impeachment proceedings now? I think we should continue the investigations in the Congress, aggressively looking for the facts, more evidence. But here's what I'm worried about, Dana. I, I don't hear Democrats talking about the issues of concern to everyday Americans enough right now. I hear a lot of focus and a lot of talk on investigations, and that's obviously important, and I believe they will eventually lead to impeachment. So, but in the meantime, working people want to hear Democrats acting on health care, on infrastructure, on the things that will affect their lives. And I don't think it's balanced enough. So my advice to Democrats in Washington is go ahead. You know, when the president had his tantrum over that infrastructure bill, the House should pass a strong infrastructure bill that will say to the American people, we're going to invest in their communities and create jobs so, for them. The Senate Democrats should affirm it. And then we should show the American people we're acting, but Trump is standing Okay, so let way. me ask you about a, a, a pretty big issue on the campaign trail, and that is criminal justice. Your fellow Democratic candidate, Kamala Harris, recently split with the frontrunner, Joe Biden, over his vote in 1994 for the crime bill. Biden says that that uh, did not generate mass incarceration. Harris disagrees. Who's right? Oh, it absolutely. That crime bill was one of the foundations of mass incarceration in a very painful era in our nation's history. And I think, look, uh, the vice president and anyone else has to be accountable for every vote they take and, and what's on their record. And, and I think that was a huge mistake. Look, we have a mass incarceration crisis still in this country. In our city, we've reduced our jail population about 30 percent already. We're going to close the infamous Rikers Island jail. Uh, we are ending the era of mass incarceration in New York City. It's taking a lot of work uh, to finally break free from that. But let's face it, federal policies, including that crime bill, were a big part of why you know, untold thousands of people and families had their lives entirely disrupted and in many ways destroyed uh, because folks who had done very little were sent to very long sentences. We've got to break out of that, and anyone responsible has to it, be accountable and has to speak to it. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you.